even on the public uh, on stations. And right now, there's only one Native American working in network television. We're talking local and uh, uh, national. Just one woman, right? Patty Kaufman. Right. And she just resigned. So she did resign. She didn't resign. I just found that out this morning. She's gone. So there are no Native Americans no. working in television in this country. None. So you think the fairness, reinstating the fairness doctrine would change that? Portions of it. You know, I, I know there are a lot of people that were unhappy, particularly the Republicans, but uh, some sections of the fairness doctrine. But I think that we need to open it up well, to have uh, minorities uh, to do that get involved again, to have programming that they can speak from their from their perspective about issues that are uh, important in their life. And we don't have that possibility. And do you think that the Fairness Doctrine actually did give you and others a voice? I know it did. I, I was called into uh, the radio uh, the television station, uh, KEVN in Rapid City, which is a commercial station. Um, and uh, the station manager said that he wanted to do a little bit more of minority programming. And he asked me if I would put together an idea to do a weekly television show, which I did. And so in 1975, <laughs> it won't give you any water that way. The first time. And you think that was specifically because of the fairness doctrine? I, I know it was. Uh, Craig Aaron, just quickly brief response. Uh, I mean, it's certainly shake, shake, shake. fascinating to hear the history and uh, shocking to hear the levels of participation uh, by the Native and American Indian community, uh, even in a place like South Dakota. I have to believe, though, that the Fairness Doctrine is not the best way to rectify that situation. I think that ownership is, is really what we need to be looking at here, and that uh, the what affected our airwaves is that radio stations have fallen into fewer and fewer hands, and very often those are uh, corporations that are controlled uh, not in local communities, that are uh, out... Uh, you know, elsewhere, the, the suits live in another state or they live in New York or L.A. or whatever, what have you. Uh, so I think that's what we need to look at is how do we restore local ownership with an emphasis on uh, uh, communities of color, native communities uh, who are vastly, vastly underrepresented when it comes to who actually owns a piece of our, our own, own broadcast license to use our public airwaves. And I believe that if we focus our activist energy and our political energy and our policy energy, that that will be a more effective way to get to the goals that I do share uh, with, 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 with Dave and I think with Tim and with Steve Rendell and, and many others who are involved here. I just don't believe that no, there is no, no, going to be the way that we get no, a no, no, better, no, more talk. diverse, more no. accountable media system. I think there are more effective policies. No, he's not going to go to that beach. It, it had a positive effect by uh, after it was eliminated, and and uh, probably it probably had a really really strong positive effect in the Native American community. That we decided we're going to start our own radio station, and so uh, Pine oh, Ridge, that's where I was born, has a KILI radio. The uh, reservation has a radio station, and. Uh, Stan Rock Reservation has its own radio station. So right now there are about 36 Native American-owned radio stations in Western uh, Western United States. So we've taken the bull by the horns and we started saying, wait, hey, you open the door for us, we'll open our own. Hmm. Oh, I'd love to do a show about that. Let's take a few more calls and then we'll get final thoughts from everyone. Let's go to Patty in Watsonville. Hi, Patty. Welcome Good to the morning. show. Well, thank you very much for having me. Um, first, I'd like to say that I agree with the speaker about the, you know, the ownership and the consolidation with fewer, you know, radio stations and TV stations being in fewer and fewer hands. I think that it's um, just like having small businesses, uh, the more uh, locally owned um, TV stations and stuff is going to make a, for a richer um uh, Field, I would say. But actually, my, my question had to do with, like, you know, Google TV down, and public up airways down, and uh, up down. Know, uh, everything is being replaced by web-based TV. And I was just kind of curious, or maybe you've already talked about this, but do the same kind of rules apply um, with the various doc doctrine when you talk about um, having more of a, a web-based TV, which is... I mean, that's kind of where we're all Right. Yeah, Craig, Goodness, what happened? Well, the short answer is no. Uh, the same rules don't apply. 
Uh, I think when you're talking about, we just remember you know, that they're you know. the number one source for, for news and information for people, so these, these old fashioned airways still do matter. But as we look at the future, I think we have to be very clear about the coming into play, uh, which is big corporations to and limit the kind of information you can get to. That is in danger. There are issues like network neutrality, network neutrality, a wrestling with, and unfortunately, I think Bill and its Guantanamo Bay provisions. 